Hey guys, Sketchy here with another episode of Crit Happens. Um, so, what I wanted to talk about today is kind of what I started talking about at the beginning of me making these videos. What I noticed, and this is again literally kind of the same thing that started me to begin with, uh, which is I saw something online and it was someone talking about how uh, basically they had a character that they didn't like. And the reason they didn't like the character was because of his stats. Uh, the story essentially goes that someone is playing D&D 3.5, 3, I think it is. And he rolls a character, and his highest stat is 14, and his lowest stat is a 9. So he's basically got all of his stats within 14 and 9 range. Which to me is actually not that bad, in all honesty. Um, and the reason for that... And this will kind of, this is kind of my mindset, and I might have already covered this a little bit. I just feel like it needs to be uh, reiterated because this is kind of what I feel about D and D in general, or role playing games in general. And now I understand that D and D is a largely rule based game. It is a very crunchy game, not quite as crunchy as other games. Uh, there are definitely games where rules are far, far more. Um, involved. But D&D does have a fair amount of them. Which is why there's it's sort of my battle between role playing and role playing game. So and this I've seen this a lot. But basically this this player he doesn't like the uh, character he has because he thinks it's unpowered, it's weak. There's no way this guy could possibly do anything. Because his dexterity is a 14. How, how can a rogue do anything with a 14 dex? Well, a rogue can do fairly well with a 14 dex because he's a rogue. Now, what I mean by that is that if you are a rogue, theoretically you should be getting so many bonuses when you attack. You should be fighting against you should usually be hitting someone who's flat footed. You should usually be flanking someone. If you have a an okay dex, you're probably using finesse weapons. Uh, there's all sorts of things that you can do. And as a rogue, your stats it's sort of a role I, I keep going I'm gonna keep going back to this. Where it's role playing over game. And the reason I, I believe that, and the reason I say that, is because as the story goes goes on, he basically tells this story, and his character ends up being the sole survivor of the entire group, and sort of the hero of the story. He in, even though he's this, he plays this meek, self-hating, almost suicidal character, but because he's doing such a good job at role playing. His DM rewards him. He said, okay, you did a great role-playing uh, thing, so here's a bonus to your role. You actually said something really good. And it's something that other people have talked about. I know Spoonie specifically has, um, where he says, or he said uh, that he, what was the term? I completely lost my train of thought there. Um, but he's, he said that role-playing will sometimes add benefits, because it does. DMs like role-playing. I remember what I was going to say. DMs like role-playing. If you just sit there and say, oh, I use diplomacy, or I use bluff, it sucks. I'm a, I am I am a DM. I, I hate when my players just like, I use diplomacy. The, the first thing out of my mouth is, okay, what do you say? If they just try and, oh, I, I use diplomacy, no, I, I'm not accepting that. Plain and simple. I understand you want to play the game, however, I want to tell the story. And that's sort of my job, and something I've been enjoying about my group recently is they've been progressing the story themselves. And this is a group that I pulled from literally nothing, or semi-nothing, I, I pulled them off of Funny Junk. Uh, and I just grabbed these guys, and I slowly uh, developed them, and they've been learning the game in their own way. Uh, one of the players, Vea, has become a very rules heavy kind of person. She knows all of the rules inside and out and usually 
it's I'm asking her for rules, but at the same time, she is still willing to role play a little bit. Uh, Fuzz is a great role player, and he gets really into character sometimes. Uh, almost so much that can distract from the game, but he because he also runs games himself, he doesn't that much. And then Paco, who is literally someone who I brought. I brought in, and he had almost no knowledge about the game whatsoever, is being a very, he's driving the story really well. Him and Fuzz are driving the story the most. Um, not to say that Vea isn't doing anything, I'm kind of working in some things to get uh, her more story involved and everyone more story involved. But I, I feel like... Too many people miss out on the story of the game. They'll talk, they'll talk about how their characters are so badass and so powerful, and in reality, it's they just got lucky with numbers or they min-maxed. They didn't create a real character. One of the comments of that video was that, oh, you're playing 3.5 and... You're rolling dice, and it had this smug little picture next to it, almost implying that that's dumb. If you if you roll and you're playing three point five, then you should be then you're doing something wrong, which I completely disagree with. I think you should roll in almost every system. If there is no rolling, obviously don't roll. But like, I think it, because it creates a character, and what I mean by that is you create, if you roll, you create a character, you don't create a template. If you're just going off of the list, and this is a problem I have with three, with a fifth edition, actually, is it basically tells you, it gives you a character. It says, okay, here's your character. There's a few minor tweaks and a few minor things you can spec specify, but it for martial classes, mages do have a little bit more variety because they can pick spells. But in regards to like martial classes, I picked, I made a fighter, and the biggest decisions were what kind of fighter I was going to be. Am I going to be a dual wielder? Am I going to be a heavy? Am I going to be a great weapon? Or am I going to be a tank? I basically had kind of three options. I have more. I could be an eldritch knight. But it, you almost fall into. I don't want to say there's three types of fighters and every fighter is going to fall into one of those categories, but you almost kind of do. Because I do see a lot of people who are like, hey, this is the best build, just do this instead. And that's boring to me. And something I've thought about, and something that most people probably don't realize, is that when you look at a block of stats, your character is, 9 out of 10 times, especially if you point by your character is a superhuman. Like I, this char this player was saying, like, oh, my character has a fourteen dexterity. That's that's crap. That's not crap. Plain and simple, it isn't. Like the people on who succeed at Ultimate Ninja Warrior might have that kind of dexterity or strength. They might they they'd be up in the fourteens because. Average isn't the an average person. If you were to take the epitome of average, take me for example. This is something I've kind of joked about for years. I am the epitome of average. Nothing of, of me is super spectacular. I'm not super amazing at anything. If I were to be on a on a character sheet, just take me. I would have tens and elevens, probably a few nines, probably a few eights. But that's how that's the kind of character that's the kind of person I am. I'm I'm just not remarkable. I'm, I'm remarkable in some things and not, but not really. There's now I'm just kind of held my own ego at this point. <laughs> but like that that's the thing I joke about. I'd be tens and elevens, maybe not, I'd be eleven through nine across the board. Now I understand that your character is supposed to be something above and beyond, and there's but, nothing wrong with that. So. What I was saying is, the thing about characters is that they're supposed to be characters, not notes on a piece of paper. Yes, they have notes on a piece of paper, but you want them to have personality. You want them to have flaws. 
I know flaws are not a good thing in some people's eyes, but some of the most entertaining moments of role-playing, in my mind, have come purely out of flaws. For instance, I mentioned in the... I don't believe I mentioned this, actually, but in my Rogue Trader game, one of the players had an abysmal intelligence score, I think it was. I can't remember the actual name of the score, but he wasn't a smart cookie. And so he comes in this he comes up upon this uh, box. And anyone else would walk up to it and say, Okay, this is a cryo box. This is you you freeze someone and they stay alive in there. He looks at this thing and says, It's explosives. He was just convinced for the rest of the game that this was explosives. My character. My character had an obsession with eggs, and it's become the most hilarious thing in our group that to this day if my character doesn't come upon eggs, then something's wrong. Um, and even in um, my other group, for a short time, I've been playing with a, I've been playing other games where Fuzz is DMing, and sort of a theme to all of my characters, and this is something else I want to talk about, but sort of a theme to all of my characters is they can't open. They can't open a door. Like, they can open a door, no problem. But if they do, something bad is going to happen. Nine out of ten times, if my character opens the door, he is going to take a lot of damage. Actually, in all of Fuzz's game, my character just has a bad day. Fuck the road, by the way. If... If you ever, for some reason, play a game with Fuzz, and he says you're going on the road, you are going to have a bad time. Especially if you're me. If, especially if you're like me. <laughs> if you're anyone like me. But, so what would happen, and we basically did this campaign twice, where, or this situation twice, where we end up in this town, and there's this big lake of blood. And the reason there's a lake of blood is because there's a Tarrasque impaled on a spike. Like, by spike, I mean a massive column of rock. And the Tarrasque can't get off of it. It keeps dying and being re and healing, but it can't get off the rock. So every once in a while, there's a flood of blood. And this eventually just forces us into a dungeon. And the first time, this ha the first time I went through this with him, I was playing a monk. And... I think it was like the first or second door I opened. No, I think the first door was an arrow trap. Which didn't make me happy. But the second door, I lo I got crit and almost died. Just the second door into this dungeon, I almost died and I lost my I ended up losing my foot. Which created an interesting situation where you now have a tiefling monk with a singham, I think it was, basically strapped to his leg, who walks in and GTS as a demon, which is probably one of my happiest moments in, in role-playing, is just being able to GTS a creature. Um, but that's part of the thing, is, and this is what I was kind of mentioning on earlier, is that all of your characters sort of play off of you, usually. Um, your character is going to have a tendency to be you, and even if it's a fraction, a part of you always should, in my mind, um, unless you're like really good at acting and you can just completely, okay, I am this kind of person naturally, but I'm going to be someone completely different for a day, and not just like gender, because some people are just like, oh, I'm a girl, so that's a completely different person now. I, I won't believe that. But, I'm kind of going off on tangents right now, and just giving my opinions on shit. Which I guess is what I'm here for. But, oh, I'm trying to get positioned here. Um, yeah, I think at this point I'm just rambling, and I'm just all over the place. So, let you shine through your character just a little bit, 
But at the same time, play a character. Play someone off the wall. Play someone different. In my Monday night group, we have a emo an emo gnome bard who is an insult comic. We have I think it's like Gregory the Green or Gary the Green or something along those lines, who's just this old, out of his mind, uh, mage. And then we have my character, who I decided to play female this time around, just for fun, named Arya Mersai. And honestly, I basically took me and boobs and a vagina. That's my character now. And it's just to sort of ex just to kind of play a different character to a minute degree, even if it's m it's going to be essentially kind of me to a degree. It is going to be a different perspective because it's a female. So my char my my friends who are guys who are playing guys are going to react to the character as a female, and that's the that's good. That's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to react as the character. You're not supposed to say, "Okay, you're a guy." I'm a guy, your character's a girl, so I'm, but I'm going to treat you as you. It, roleplay, plain and simple. I am meandering about, rambling on. Um, but yeah, roleplay. It's the funnest part of roleplaying games. If you aren't doing that, there's, there's simulations. There's plenty of those. If you just want crunch, Go find something crunchier than this, honestly. that That's my opinion. Uh, I know everyone's going to play the game they want to play, and for the reasons they want to play it. Maybe because it's super easily min-maxed, maybe because it, they just like the setting, or it's just the only game they know. But I think if more people just played... Um, just role played a little bit. There'd be a lot less arguments, honestly. I've seen a lot and a lot of D and D problems started, role playing problems in general, started because of the crunch of the game, the rules, and all sorts of reasons. That's what's going to start an argument. Your character being a dick, yeah, that can start an argument. But as long as it's within reason, as long as you're kind of okay, you're going to be fine, I think. But I think most of the arguments I've ever seen are rule-based ones. So, keep the rules in the game, of course, because without it, it just becomes a bunch of guys sitting around uh, talking funny, saying kind of like writing out a movie plot that accomplishes nothing. But, yeah. Play the game. Play the game. Role play. Have a good time, guys. That's why we do this. That's why we play games. That's why people talk about it. So until I ramble on for another 30-40 minutes about absolutely nothing, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, so until next time, guys. Game on.